How to spot weld with a resistance spot welder. All right, let's get into it. Here we go. When possible, I really like to use a resistance welder. Well, for one thing, it mimics the factory assembly technique and it produces a really nice clean job and what we've got going on today we're going to be assembling these 1949 chevy splash pans and we're going to be using the uh, resistance spot welder here so we're going to do a mock-up get that thing uh seated in the vise clamped firmly into place and then we're going to be putting marks where we're going to be using the resistance welder now these parts have an EDP coating and the resistance welder really doesn't work well through that so a small amount has to be removed down to bare metal and we're going to be prepping all of this now we're marking the back side that's going to be the actual mating surface but we have to use a well through primer now this well through primer has zinc in it and that's uh, one of the best things to use for bare steel and that's going to allow the resistance welder to uh, work properly and we want to do a really nice clean job so we're just masking this off this is going to be the mating surface or assembly surface and we've got a nice uh, thin coat of well through primer alright time for parts assembly get it clamped back into the original position everything's looking really good can't have enough clamps and here's our resistance spot welder and before I start that little, uh, you see a little black on the tong into the tip of the tongs. We're going to clean that. And the way this works, you clamp it in to the surface. And then that little button I pointed towards or toggle switch. Well, you clamp it, hit that toggle switch for a couple of seconds. And if you leave it, it activated too long, you will burn through. So we have to pay attention few seconds uh, that's all it needs all required and this unit is heavy so you want to be efficient and here's a little bit better shot on the home stretch let's clamp and activate see it turn uh, cherry red there for a second and that's when you want to stop you always want to wear goggles or a face shield sometimes uh, it throws off a lot of sparks and there you have it really nice clean finish and the alternative is to use a, a MIG welder or TIG weld this together but this method is much much faster and much more clean you don't have any cleanup there's the shot of the back side. You can see we have full penetration. And honestly, we don't need all of the uh, resistance well. This was just for the uh, video. You could get by with like half of that amount. And so that now we have our uh, parts mated with the primer in between we can go ahead and prep the back side and apply a little bit of uh, epoxy to that and now that's uh, finished until the paint process so we're going to flip that thing over and uh, address the top side we're using some 320 there to sand down and feather in the edges finishing off with some scotch bright it's a little irregular surface we want all the surfaces nice and uh, prepped for the next step. And if uh, you want, you can come back with a little bit of filler and take care of those 
minor indentions. And here's a shot of the finished assembled splash pan with primer over it. Ready for the uh, next step, bodywork and paint. Really nice clean finish, really like the resistance welder. The only downside with the resistance welder is you're limited by the length of the tong as to how far in you can go around two objects. Hey, thanks for watching.